Fafnir is a money-loving support that helps you take objectives. Let's talk about it. Hello there everyone, it's me, Celtic, your Smite Professor, here today to talk about the basics on how to both play and build Fafnir within Smite. Let's start by talking about abilities. Now, for Fafnir's passive, basically for everything that Fafnir gets an assist on, he gets an extra two gold, okay? He likes to farm his cash. Now, on top of this, depending on how much gold in hand Fafnir is holding, he is going to gain up to 25 of each protection if he is holding a thousand gold. Now, Fafnir's first ability is a line attack. Now, this line attack shows Fafnir throwing a hammer. This hammer is going to stop on the first enemy god that it hits. On impact, a curse is going to go out from the target. Now, the target is stunned, but everything around the target is going to be slowed. Fafnir's second ability is Coerce. Basically, he buffs someone. He chooses a target and he buffs them. This target is going to have increased attack speed and do increased damage per hit on either abilities or auto attacks for 5 seconds. Now, Fafnir's third ability is a leap. He leaps forward, and there's this cone wherever he's going to land. Enemies caught in this cone are going to take damage and be disarmed for a couple seconds. Now for Fafnir's ult, he basically channels, becomes untargetable, and turns into a dragon, where all of his three old abilities that we just talked about are now going to have new effects. So for the one, it's still a line attack, it still has the same properties, except now it deals bonus ticking damage on the target that is stunned. Now, the second ability becomes an area of effect buff, so now instead of choosing one target, you get to buff everyone that stands in an area. This is where Fafnir's objective burn comes into play, because now instead of buffing one player, you can buff your entire team right before you need to take a gold fury, and then you can burn the gold fury. Fafnir's dragon third ability is a really long leap. Now, I mean long, he can dash for days, but what's special about this is the cone becomes wider, and on top of disarming, the cl target closest to where Fafnir lands is actually going to be stunned, allowing you to have much better single target lockdown in dragon form. Now, further to this, other things are happening. In dragon form, Fafnir's basic attacks change from nice, steady Fafnir hammer stuff to a steady stream of Dragon's Breath. This Dragon's Breath is a lot like Jormungandr's auto attacks, but without any juice. You just get to keep on spraying out fire. Now, the final thing that occurs is when you're charging Fafnir's ultimate, you are not targetable, like I said before, but everything caught in the giant circle, when Fafnir turns into a dragon, is going to be cursed and dealt damage after the transformation takes place. Now, at the end of the duration of Fafnir's Dragon Time, he is going to collapse and start transforming back into Dwarf Time. When he is de-transforming from Dragon to Dwarf, you are targetable and enemies can kill you. So now that we have talked about the basics of Fafnir, let's talk about a build to help you succeed a little bit. This is the build that I recommend for Fafnir. It is just a support build. The most notable thing to talk about is Pridwin. When you pick up Pridwin, it's going to proc when you go from Dragon back to Dwarf. And since that's the time that Fafnir is the most vulnerable, this extra HP shield is going to help you get out of some stickier situations, plus cooldown reduction is awesome. Now that is all the time I have to talk about Fafnir. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel. I am all about making your Smite experience just a little bit better. Now, if you want to keep learning Smite with me right now, click this video on your screen and I will see you there. Otherwise. Have yourselves a casual day, and I will see you in the next video.